people so yeah so she did a thing um on monday that i found out about uh funny enough on saturday shout out to savvy who actually sent this to me and other content uh creators in this space um she sent um i sure a lot of you've seen this online she, there was a flyer that was going out over the weekend you know, regarding her hosting uh, this uh, recruitment fair that's got, that featured service schools uh, at this high school uh, mm. in her um, district in the Bronx, New York. Yeah, Bronx. Um, so, um, so yeah, I tweeted about it, uh, and many of us tweeted about it, um, just showing, speaking on our displeasure on it. I'll get into that momentarily. Um, but I just wanted to remind you, we want to go down memory lane a m little bit. Where once upon a time, and especially being that she was a justice Democrat, well, is, but they haven't done shit. Um, AOC, as part of her principles within the organization, would be against anti-war. And... She actually talked about this, and I remember her speaking about this many, many years ago. Uh, well, not many, that many, but in 2020, where uh, as written in the Americano, written by Araceli Cruz, AOC wants the military to stop recruiting young people at schools. Mm. So, so she writes, with military recruitment hitting an all-time low, the government is getting creative with its approach, including scouting young people on social media. Which it has been. Yeah. We've, we've talked about specifically, not to cut you off. Um, it was at, um, was it Howard? Uh, me and Indy covered that specifically about how they did a whole recruitment fair like right after they had those protests at um, Howard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was all military, CIA stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the U.S. military is on the fire. With numerous deaths at the Fort Hood base in Texas this year and recruitment centers closing throughout the country, joining the military isn't as appealing as it once was. The government is implementing new strategies in order to reach out to young prospects through inventive measures, such as recruiting on social media. Amid all the turmoil, President Donald Trump continues to brag about increasing military funding to rec record numbers, why Representative Alexandria Casio Cortez is seeking to halt military funding that targets recruiting in middle and high schools. Except, well, whether through recruitment stations at their lunchrooms or now through esports teams, children in low income communities are persistently targeted for enlistment, Representative Casio Cortez said in a statement to the New York Times. She said the military can, for some, provide a rewarding career, but added that low income Americans are not being given anywhere near the same information or access to trade schools, college, or other postgraduate opportunities. Hold on to that statement. Yeah. Okay, because I want to go into that later. In many public high schools where military recruiters have a daily presence, there is not even a counselor, she said. As a result, the military stops feeling like a choice and starts feeling like the only option for many young, low-income Americans. This is the second initiative Representative AOC introduced against military funding in a week. On July 22nd, she presented an amendment that would prevent the military from promoting themselves on entertaining platforms such as Twitch TV, Twitch TV, video games, esports, or live streaming. Representative Casio Cortez isn't the only person who is discouraging military recruitment that targets low-income low citizens. Earlier this month, after the remains of soldier Vanessa Guillen was were discovered not far from Fort Hood, Domingo Garcia, the national president of the League of the United Latin American Citizens, mm -hmm. questioned the standard procedures of the military and their means to protect service members, especially Latinas. Garcia urged Latinas not to join the military. We're asking all women, especially Latina women or their families, do not enlist in the army until we have the assurance they will be protected and taken care of when they serve our country. And right now, I just don't believe the military is capable of doing that because of what happened to Vanessa Guillen. 
Garcia told ABC 13. Again, pull that sentence. Yeah. Um, will be important later. In April, Major General James Spearman, commander of Marine Corps Recruitment Command, told ABC News that he reached out about 40% of his estimate 37,000 recruit goal this year. Jesus. In order to, in order to increase recruitment, the military has also lowered its standards for acceptance. Yep. For example, Military Times reported that about 12% of recruits are allowed to waive either the weight, drug use, criminal records, or test scores in order to join the military. Yep. Uh, so we'll stop right there. This? Uh, no, uh, that's it for now. Um, thoughts so far? Well, we, we, I think we, one of us covered either me or, um, like me and Indy or, or you and I, um, that they were lowering the IQ for entry. Um, mm -hmm. so, I mean, this is also with studies of like, I want to say like 70% of Americans couldn't meet that. Like there, there's some crazy number of like how many Americans couldn't meet the requirements for military service anyway. Um, so like, but he has a 37,000 recruit goal in a year. Right. That's ridiculous. Right. right. Um, I guess that's for the entire, um, uh, Marine Corps, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, but still, that's a lot of like bodies Body. young yeah. bodies mm -hmm. um, predominantly what kind of bodies too predominantly lower class black, yes black and brown yeah um um i will say this and i'll go into that more it's interesting for me uh now i went to a prep school uh high school uh catholic mm -hmm. all boys uh high school back in the day and it was funny for me being black that going into the military was more of an option for me than like my white peers i'm fairly certain yeah um i remember having the conversation and it was a very short conversation with my mom you know when it was time for me to think about college she asked well what do you think about the military that was an immediate no for me and we never went into it again you know mm -hmm. so <laughs> but I remember my older siblings, and I say this, uh, this is an aside, uh, but one of my older sisters in particular mentioned this to me when I was older, out of college, but I remember like one of the few things that I remember her saying to me was, don't ever fight in a might man's war, therefore do not go into armed forces. With she was saying that because my nephew, yeah. Um, she said that because my nephew, uh, her son, did end up going into uh, the military, um, much to her sadness. But being that he was of age, you know, that was his choice. So she allowed him to do it. And for him, it's ended up to be a pretty good thing for him. But as the article says, you know, like normally, if you're in a low income neighborhood and you're looking to get ahead, and you're looking for ways to finance your education, the military is a way that we've kind of been propagandized into believing that that's the way you can do that. Um, obviously, they don't necessarily talk about, you know, the side effects or the aftermath of what you might have to go through, assuming that you go on a tour, um, and then having to come back and then having to deal with life, you know, yep. post, you know, tour. You know, just like with the mental strain and just the acclimation back into society and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, as I said, this is more of a thing that I've seen, you know, within my community and not so much in an affluent, you know, white yeah. community that this is that the idea of going into the military. Well, not to say it's not, but it's rare. Yeah. Um, at least if you're affluent and well, white. And my, that my, my father. When, when he was, you know, volunteered for the Marine Corps, right? It was, he had gotten like 37 speeding tickets in one day. And like the judge right. said, like, 
hey, it's either jail or you can go to the other, like walk down to the other wing to the recruitment office. Like a lot of times they're in the same buildings as like, you know, county, right. like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, for for the people who would be the people going to jail anyway or, you know, right. lower class, impoverished, like, you know. Um, like, I have a close friend. We were about this. We were the same age. Also went to a prep school, but except it was a predominantly black school. So it wasn't as great compared to the one I went to. Mm. Um, and he dropped out of school. And basically, you know, the only thing he was very smart. He's very smart, too. But he just was a type that just got bored with school. Um, and the option, the only option basically was for him at the time was going to the Marine Corps. Yeah. Which he did. Mm -hmm. um but i can't necessarily say it really made anything out of his life now um but again that's very common you know in, in terms of white low but income Colin, how that. dare you take away the opportunity to go to west point for these kids um well we'll get into that um yeah. we'll mm -hmm. get into that um so um so all that to say as a long aside you know, so that was what AOC was saying three years ago in three terms ago. of the military, okay. the military and, you know, essentially the grooming that happens, especially in low income neighborhoods uh, to have young people enlist in the armed services. So you can imagine he hypocrisy when Savvy sent me this ad over the weekend, which I tweeted out on Saturday. Uh, where I said, just happened to record an anti-war march. So I was just ran into um, the, the Peace for Ukraine rally uh, over the weekend. I was doing, um, I was doing a presentation um, earlier in the day, and I happened to leave on the way home, and they were marching like a couple of blocks away. So that's when I recorded it, and then I saw this. Mm. Um, so actually, hold on, we'll go back. Yep. Uh, because I do think it is important to kind of see this. So, so the ad states, um, join representatives AOC and Adrian, Adriano Espelat. Uh, so he's congressman for Queens, yeah. um, District 13. Um, representatives at the Student Services Fair. Representatives Alexandria Casio cortez and Adriana Espelat are hosting a student services fair to help students connect with the U.S. Department of Education, our U.S. Services Academies, intern opportunities, and more. So they give the date, 4 to 6, at this high school in the Bronx. We will be joined by special guests from U.S. Naval Academy, the mm -hmm. U.S. Armed Forces Academy, the U.S. Military Academy, the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, the U.S. Department of Education, former interns, and last year's winner of the Congressional App Challenge. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, the problem many of us had, and I'm sure many of you had, was the highlight of these service schools. Right? Yep. So, so again, this kind of goes back to contradicts what AOC said regarding the military Three years ago, yeah, she was essentially hosting an event where the feature seems to be the enlisting or recruiting high schoolers into the military. So, um, so much noise over this over the weekend to the point where Democracy Now, uh, I believe on Monday reported on it. So, yeah. let's watch briefly this short clip. Community organizers, parents, teachers, and students rallied at Bronx High School Monday protesting a military recruitment and job fair event hosted by New York Congress members Alexandria Casio Cortez and Adriano Espaillat. The so called Why's Student the Services quality? Fair featured representatives of the U.S. No Army, idea. Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. Advocates accused Ocasio Cortez of backtracking on her anti war campaign promises and policies opposing predatory military recruitment tactics that predominantly target 
black, brown, Latinx, and low-income students. In 2020, Ocasio-Cortez proposed a ban against military recruitment on Twitter, while she later pushed for a bill amendment that would have halted federal funding for military recruitment in middle and high schools. Richie Marino is an organizer with the Bronx Anti-War Coalition, speaking at Monday's rally at Renaissance High School, which took place on the 20th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Iraq. A lot of youth here um, are struggling to find jobs. Uh, many youth here are not prepared to go to college, right? Instead of uh, bringing military recruiters here, we should be having a, a jobs fair. We should be having a college fair. Um, Renaissance High School is an arts and theater school. Where are the arts and theater programs represented here, AOC? You're saying this is a student services fair. Where are the services for the youth? Richie Marino was speaking with Democracy Now!'s Sanji Lopez. Organizers also demanded justice for Vanessa Guillen and Ana Basulio Ruiz, two Latina women who were killed after they reported being sexually assaulted at Fort Hood Army Base in Texas. Guillen in 2020, Ruiz last week, and 21-year-old Abdul Latifu, who was murdered in January by another soldier at Fort Rucker in Alabama. Latifu was from the Bronx. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, Democracy now.org, the warrant. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they basically mm -hmm. repeated a lot of what we read earlier. But you notice what Richie, uh, who's one of the uh, protesters outside of school, was saying. And I think this is something that's interesting because I didn't actually know this until this afternoon that Renaissance, Renaissance High School is an art school. Yeah. So why is it that they had military recruiters there? You know? I mean, the, so, Glenn, the Glenn Miller band needs another group of, you know, kids, I guess. Um, I, dude, I won't even tell you how many times they tried to get us recruited into stuff through that as well. Like military really? band stuff. Oh, yeah. That's a very big thing. They show up to like every band thing everywhere, right? Trying to recruit people into military bands. Yes. Very, very very much a thing um God. i remember it at right. every every event like they were there um right so yeah I... but so yeah it gets worse so um so a lot of these following are from twitter yes uh so i have to kind of piece everything together so shout out to lucy um blue moon uh, please follow her and actually INN colleague. Uh, so she actually lives in the Bronx. So she is AOC's constituent. So, um, so Lucy was on the ground tweeting this out prior, like over the weekend. Um, and she was present um, during this thing to protest outside the school on Monday. So she tweeted over the weekend, join us at the military recruitment event to register people in, to register people independent and direct them away from the door. So you remember, those of you might remember, uh, when she uh, confronted AOC, when she yep. spoke to her in Spanish, that's what she said she was going to do, was she was going register to register people, people as independent. To, to register outside. So mm -hmm. that's what she was going to do uh, at this event as well. Um, oh, You went back one, there you go. No, okay. All right. And then... Again, this was on over the weekend. Um, so when she tweets out this out, parents and teachers say military recruiters out of our schools. War is not a career option. Training to kill is not a skill. We demand Congress members AOC and Adriano Espelot stop being military recruiters. Shame on you. The Bronx needs money for jobs and free colleges, <laughs> free college education, not endless war. Um, and she, they give. Um, you know, so information about, you know, where the school is um, yeah. and information where uh, to contact them. So. And that was those people we just saw, probably. Yeah. Um, yes. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, so she continues, for the military recruitment event, we would like to give the kids some pamphlets or information about college abroad. Has anyone gone to college abroad that can send me some info? Um, I'm Nikki, actually... I think, RLA did. Yeah. I'm actually trying to see uh, because <laughs> I believe there was a recruiter who um, who had uh, who is a part of a medical school in Cuba, 
Um, mm. that I'm actually going to try to see if we can interview. So I'm in con currently in contact with Lucy for that. Um, but the idea was for this, and I think this is significant to kind of show, you know, the idea of like, instead of giving these high schoolers, and I would imagine these would be sophomores and juniors, because seniors, I now, you know, are waiting to hear back from colleges. Yeah. Um, mostly. Um, like other options. You know, I know Savvy and I said, if you're able to, and you have the means to, it's a lot cheaper to study abroad. Um, and actually Cuba, if you're able to do it, is actually a good option. Yeah. Um, if you're able to, I know plenty of people in the Caribbean um, who actually do study in Cuba because one, it's cheap, cheaper relatively compared to the U.S. And then, um, and then like you're able to get the maximum, especially if you're looking to go into the medical field, mostly, you know, like the good resources and good schools uh, yeah. in Cuba where you're able to study, you know, medicine. Um, <clears throat> so, which makes a lot of sense given that. This is the Bronx. This is mostly a Latino neighborhood, Black and Latino neighborhood. So giving students other options in terms of, you know, like, instead of, like, the military, then, you know, offering the idea of, like, maybe going abroad to go to school. Um, well, which, even then, again, this would be something that, like, parents would probably bring up with you when talking about military or other options, except... What what happened with this with this thing? Um, right. This right so here? yeah. So this is from Gaijin Girl. Gaijin Girl. Two thousand four. Yep. Gaijin Girl. Um. So um. So she tweeted this out on Monday. Uh. Please share. We're here at AO the AOC military recruitment fair. Security isn't letting in parents who have registered. They want to talk to their kids alone. No, what huge red flag, huge, giant, like enormous red flag. Like that seems real awkward, you right. know, and they registered like they're right. Right. Like, so she continues. What the fuck? Oh, too oh. many clicks. Way too oh. many clicks. Jesus Christ. There we go. Sorry. Okay, there we go. That's all right. To clarify further, they let in some parents with their kids and others they blocked while letting in all kids who came alone. AOC snuck in the side door and then Eva waited until long after it was over or left through another entrance we weren't near. So, so I think by this point, because AOC probably saw the backlash she was getting, she didn't want to Eva confront um, the protesters or like possibly get involved with any media to kind of speak on on this right that she did basically decided to be a coward and like sneak in and sneak out so she wouldn't have to confront the protesters instead of i would argue engaging in them and yeah i'm going to say this now i think the biggest issue that i have with AUC in doing this is this just kind of shows it's directly dodging your constituency it's but directly... not only that, but just like she's definitely a part of the elite bubble at this point. And yes. you got to remember, like, number one, AOC did not grow up in the Bronx. OK, she lived in West Ch Westchester County, New York. All right. Let's keep that clear. Um, I think she, I believe and you can verify this in the chat. She was born in the Bronx. Um, her parents grew like were poor, but. Her father was, um, what was he? I believe he was um, an architect. Um, so modest beans, I would argue. Um, but they weren't working class, I would argue. I would say they were definitely more middle class, if anything else. Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, AOC, you know, she, I mean, she had the opportunity to go to public school in Westchester County, so they obviously have better schools there. Uh, went on to Boston University. You guys know the story about what on AOC. So this just kind of shows, like, the lack of consideration she has in her constituents to kind of understand 
the experience that she went through was it's certainly not the experience many of her constituents would go through. Right. And instead of engaging in them and kind of asking them, I'm concerned about your children, especially high school students regarding their education. What would you want your students? What would you like your children? What kind of experiences would you want your children to have? What can we offer them in terms of knowing what their options are? You know, if there was that back and forth with her constituents and having like a job fair, a career fair, whatever you want to call it around that, that would be one thing. But, you know, and I'm going to be very fair to AOC. She may not have decided to do this. She may have been asked to do this, but the fact yeah. that she, when... her name was attached to this yeah, in terms of having the military, you know, essentially headlining and yeah, there were different, definitely different organizations there, but they weren't mentioned. I read the ad, they weren't mentioned at all. It was just basically the military schools that were the highlight of this. So, so the idea of like, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say someone asked um, like what, what the criteria was for getting parents in that room, right? right. And uh, Gaijin Girl replies, well, one of the security guards told us, paraphrasing here, that they didn't want to let in anyone who might get in the way of the presenters providing their options. So they just didn't want like dissenting voice in that room. Dissenting voice, right. Okay. Plenty of unassorted kids went in, kids with their grannies, etc. So yeah. Like um there's a bit more I think, right? Yeah. Um, so oh, so yeah, so we'll get to AOC in a minute. But like but yeah. Um, yeah, it's, if she was engaging with her community properly, she would have known better, honestly. Yeah. So, so it just, and it, as I was saying, like, to, I'm going to be very fair to AOC. This may not necessarily be the case. She may not have made this decision to hold this, but the fact that she attached her name to it is very problematic, given what she has said regarding the military three years ago. And so... I am more than understand and I'm more than sympathize these parents being pissed that, you know, essentially these children probably went in and maybe some parents went in for the celebrity of AOC being able to get to see her, but then having military schools basically, and I don't care what it is, you know, like, yeah, like, these schools like West Point, they are colleges, but the idea of you going into those schools is that you will go into the military. Yeah. So I don't care what people say, you know, it's an opportunity. It's maybe an opportunity that many parents, I'm sure if you ask them, and again, given this community of what they've experienced, do not want. So, 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 so for that, go ahead. Well, I, I mean, even she's got her name on all the posters. She shows up to this mm -hmm. event, but then she wants to deny that she was at that event. Like... Well, yeah. Well, let's get into that. So, and again, shout out to Lucy uh, for recording this and posting this on YouTube. So in the midst of the backlash and funny how she did not mention this on Twitter. You know, she did it on her Instagram. Uh, and I think she did it on the story. So after a while, you won't see it. But again, Lucy happened to record this and it's up on YouTube. So we can see. Yeah, just play it and just see. And let's just see what she says regarding all of this. Because people can just like wait. Politics is so crazy because people can just like wake up and make up whatever they want to say about you. And. It'll be totally false and people will just believe it, right? They'll just believe it. So today someone made a, made up a rumor that I, me, was hosting a military recruitment fair for high schoolers. Now, like, does that sound like something I would do? Like no shade to anybody, but just me, does that sound like something I would do? No, yes. then basic due diligence would mean ask a follow-up question, right? Like just because someone is like 
think positively. Said something on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So she said people do their due diligence. And the problem them. is AOC. The problem is AOC. We have. Yeah. Lucy has asked you directly. Jose has asked you directly. You wouldn't talk to the people that were asking you directly outside the event. So that's bullshit. Fucking. The hoes be knowing. So, and again, it's the idea of maybe you should do your due diligence, AOC. Yeah. And ask the people in your constituency what they're looking for for their kids and what opportunities can you support them with to ensure that their kids get what they need. Mm -hmm. The last thing that they need, especially given the stories that we just read, is that they want their children to go in the military, even if it's like West Point. Yep. So cut the victim shaming and the bullshitting, you know, and she says this on Instagram. This isn't for us. This is more for her, like, her audience. And yeah. her stands, which are the liberals who may not know of what she said a few years ago. So that's why I believe she's counting on in her belief that, oh, they're not going to remember what I said a few years ago. I'm just going to say this bullshit right now. And they'll support me because I'm AOC. I'm the progressive one. I try to fight for the people, mm -hmm. you know? But for those of us who actually have been watching her for a while and seeing her bullshit, you know, we're able to call this out. And she doesn't like that. So she's trying to say, Wake up, face. asshole. So you she's got trying no to say, friends in right Washington, D.C. <laughs> Thanks, Richie. So she's trying to say, face now to her stands who will sympathize with her. The very people, again, who do not have to worry about going into the military, by the way, because these are the people who are the privileged ones who have the opportunities generally to go into colleges like she did, you know, and are afforded to have that option for her versus low income, which may or may not have that option unless you go into very unique or special circumstances. Yep. Keep going. Twitter and we posted a screenshot. Like, that, so. ask, the, the, the next step is not, I'm just going to believe that and share it. The next step is, let me ask a follow-up question, right? But that didn't happen today. Ask them! So what did happen today? Well, a lot of people don't know that your member of Congress can extend a lot of opportunities to you, um, if, especially if you're in high school. And there are things, for example, did you know that there is a congressional art challenge that happens every year? And if your art piece of art is selected by your member of Congress, then you get you and your family fly to Washington. It gets hung up in the U.S. Capitol. It's a big deal if you want to apply to colleges and schools. Uh, There's also. OK, and. Do they get scholarships like mm -hmm. why would a high schooler want to do that just to see their work? in congress for nothing like why did she feel the need to mention that for the prestige and celebrity you might have of you know like it's visibility it's like literally unpaid uh, washington runs on unpaid internships you know right so here you going congressional app challenge for high schoolers as well and if you can design an app which melissa right over here did and won um, it's also a really, really big deal. And you can have just like so much progress for college or any other opportunities as well. City year, which is over there, provides a gap year. If you're not ready to go to college, you can spend a gap year in service. And so we held okay. a student services okay. fair to show all of the Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a rant on city year. Mm. Because I did a similar program out of college. City Year can be a good program for some, for those, for people who, you know, are looking to make a difference in low income communities, who are looking to, you know, like have an idea of what, you know, like, you know, being able, like, it's basically, I don't even want to say volunteer, but, you're living in poverty uh, while you're volunteering at, like, maybe a school or something like that, you know, essentially. Now, 
I did a similar program out of college through AmeriCorps, however. The program that I did, which was is kind of comparable to City Year, is I made ten thousand dollars a month that a year that year that I did it. So like I had my housing for free, I had my medical and dental insurance for free, and I was able to get a forbearance at my student loans at the time. But and I only got paid ten months of the year, so like there was a couple of months during the year. Like, I basically I don't know how I managed to survive, you know, because I made no money. But like after all is said and done, I got like seven hundred dollars a month for food, transportation, to pay like my credit card bills, to pay for stuff for my classroom. So I was lucky if I had like maybe two hundred dollars to my name a month, you know, during that year. Like, what the fuck can you do with that? And then, like, I know plenty of my colleagues at that year, you know, they had cars that they were driving to and from. They had to buy but same, similar shit. I didn't have a car. Well, didn't have a car at the time, so I didn't have that expense. But for many of them, you know, if you, again, if you're privileged and if you have family that are able to support you through that, then mm -hmm. that'd be one thing. You'd be able to do it. But if you're low income, you know, that would be very tough for you to try to do city or any of these programs without some type of support. Yeah. Because the idea yeah. is that you're living in poverty, you know, to kind of get an understanding of what the low, in low income families go through while you're working out of school, whatever program it is, um, to gain experience. So, again... I'm not knocking city year if you're able to do it and you have the right support, but it may not necessarily be the thing for low income students, especially like if you do not have the familial support financially to help support you in that to be able to do it. So again, not necessarily the best case AOC can make here, I think. And she should know better be given that like yeah. within her program like given her position and i know she's familiar with city year she because knows. they're very in boston in particular mm -hmm. like she should know better than to kind of make this pitch to low-income students mm -hmm. anyway keep going opportunities that are available to high school students there were a small amount that had to do with our u.s service academies now, maybe you haven't heard of what a service academy is. Small maybe amount. you have. Um, but maybe you've heard of institutions like West. What, wait, what does she call? Okay. Sure. Like, yes, West Point. That's not the only one. Point right. or Annapolis. And these are kind of like colleges, universities, military colleges, universities, except there is a requirement in, in my job, part of my job, just comes with the role is that you cannot apply to these schools without a nomination a federal nomination from your member of congress your representative your senator the vice president of the united states or the president of the united states you cannot apply without uh, that letter and so misleading you don't right, but need... also what what letter for what for her job like, is what it sounds for her like job. So right. she needs to all you need all you need is a letter from ROTC. Uh-huh. That's really all you need. Yep. And shout out to Sabi. And again, I listen to Sabi because Sabi, you know, comes from a military background. Well, her military family. So obviously she knows the ins and outs more than I do. Um, I know she put a clip on regarding all of this today. So watch her clip to get a better understanding of this. But yep. basically with this, you don't need a letter from her as a recommendation to these service academies. All you need essentially is a letter from ROTC, which you, if you do that in high school, you know, that's all you need in order for like a recommendation to these schools, not her. Yep. So she's kind of saying, oh, I'm trying to help the community by giving these students an opportunity that they may not otherwise have when they might have that opportunity anyway if they're in ROTC in that high school. So that's bullshit. And I, I had to sign these things anyway 
and and so we have a responsibility to inform people of that process and there were a couple tables there today to talk about that now there were how many tables they had merchant marine academy they had like all four all branches navy all four air force army all four yeah space force marine was Corps. probably there too um like now among all of these tables well marine Corps and even that was like would be your navy recruiter in that case navy okay. academy i think i think I don't think the Marine Corps have their own academy yet. I could be completely wrong. But I think that's still kind of, even though Marine Corps is kind of its separate branch, it's much more under the Navy branch. Right. Um, used to be, at least. Like such a small fraction of all the tables and stuff that was there. We even had the Department of Education uh, come in, representatives, to deliver a presentation on the changes to FAFSA that are coming up, in case you don't know the FAFSA application process and some of those things are changing. And so people really need to know that. A lot of kids do their FAFSA on their own. I had to file my FAFSA by myself and this is really important information to have. So, I mean, judge for yourself. Does this- What, name here? Address okay. here? It, I mean, I want to, I had to do the FAFSA by myself, but I have something to say <laughs> regarding the US department, especially like, Given the fuck up they're doing regarding student loans right now, mm. do you really think that they're going to be a good resource for, yeah, the FAFSA will help you get some federal aid, but that's not going to be much right. depending, you know? So my question to her is, okay, that's one thing to have those representatives here, especially for the changes or whatever, but you're still going to have the issue with many students, especially if they're thinking about going to college to possibly take out loans. Where are the opportunities for maybe like scholarships or grant money outside of the federal government that these students can apply to? But also, that's not something AOC was there doing. That was like what the college was doing. Like, or this other organization where she showed up and she's trying to take credit for that while also using the same excuse I just gave that she just showed up to deny this other thing. To deny that the military recruiters were there. Like. You can't. You can't use literally the same argument to do two. Oh, God. We don't need to watch anymore, but I think, you know, we got the point, you know, but. um, But yeah, so. And she continues on saying, you know, like. Um, she's being targeted because she's a woman, she's of color, you know, and people hate her and all this kind of, yada, yada, like all this kind of victimization bullshit that she tends to do whenever she gets caught doing some shit, you know, and, you know, she basically made the argument, like, would I be at an event like this? You were there because you were there. Colleague just tweeted this, you know, that day you know, later in the evening that you were there with him, you know? So, uh, so he's saying pleasure joining my friend AOC and New York students. And there was him taking a picture. Um, right. So um, I do want to kind of go for this a little faster because, um, because I get, want to get to a very important part of this. Yeah. Um, so actually. You got it. Forward, forward, forward. I was pushing forward. All right, so this is the the T. Um, so you saw Amy Goodman um, do this report on AOC regarding all of this. I guess her goons basically called democracy now and be like, retract that shit. Um, that they put out this tweet. Um, so editors know, after our broadcast... AOC's office reached out to Democracy Now! In a statement, her communications director, Lauren Hilt, said, the congresswoman didn't hold a job fair or military recruitment fair. Okay. She held a student services fair. Now you're just talking about semantics, basically. Now. Yes. So, so bullshit. Um, there were tables on a FASA. It's not well sexy. 
but it's FAFSA. As well as, inter as well as internship opportunities through our office and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute. We also had tables with presenters from the Congressional app and art compositions, as well as representatives from the state and city to share their student-centered activities. There were no military enlistment offers. Just wrong? Wrong. Well, well if, you, if this were a college fair, that would wouldn't be, be a recruiter essentially enlist you? That would be, yes, so, that would be a college recruiter. Right. That's like if you if you had if they were all athletes in that room instead of artists, that's exactly what you would call them. They would be college recruiters. Right. Um But also but also, how can you say that shit? Like there was no military officers. It wasn't a military recruitment fair. And like, there was a colonel there. I didn't put in that clip, but there was a colonel there that spoke regarding all of this. You know. But you also wouldn't speak with the people that, like, you you wouldn't speak with the people outside of that event that were your constituents that, that had, you wouldn't let the parents in the room. Right. Why wouldn't you let the parents in the room if it was just a, like, a, a student services fair? Anyway. Um, out of over a dozen tables, we did have a few representatives from the service academies, West Point, Naval Academy, etc. But that's only because applicants to those four-year colleges are required to attain a letter of recommendation from their... No, that's not true. In contrast to enlisting the military straight out of high school, applying to the service academies has typically, can, has typically been a pretty elite and complex process, mostly accessible to those from affluent backgrounds. Uh. Okay. The goal here was to make that path more accessible to those who are interested in serving in the military while simultaneously offering many other postgraduate options at the same event. Except you so, you gave like two uh -huh. things as like there's two two versus like four different naval like military you had two examples. You had a fucking FAFSA. You did a thing on FAFSA and like congressional app and art competition. That's your two? Right. Like you're not doing a great like spread there. You got like two now, vegetables and the rest is just dog shit. That's not a fucking like buffet. You know? Like what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, it's we it's it's one thing for AOC to call them out, like the constituents essentially. I like fuck democracy now for this because they basically took it and basically with their tails between their legs and did not say well, anything to counter. But also they don't need to. I I I'm more than willing to do that for them. Like, thanks right. for putting I mean, it out. I don't, I don't think they need to, in a sense, because they did show clips. They didn't have to retract anything. Up. No, if they but retracted I stuff, like, that's one thing. But, like, right. you can't but, deny that uh, the people were there asking you about that. Like, that's, they're trying to literally narrative control democracy now. And democracy right. now is putting that out here. Like, they wanted to tell us what to say. I mean, right. I, you that's, know, I also see what you're saying, but yeah, it's like, you know, but again, um, democracy now just got the clips based from people like Lucy that were that were up on Twitter. Yeah. You know, if there was really a problem, you know, why couldn't democracy now speak to those uh, co her constituents directly for an interview and just to kind of give a little bit more information or a little bit more insight as to why they were upset yeah you know so you know so again you they did they necessarily need to do that no but would that have been helpful in this case sure um you know but it just kind of seems like aoc just yelled at that well the, her you know her um communications director basically yelled at them basically being like no AOC wasn't there for this you better retract this of a, or else basically or and else democracy. what 
you won't come on democracy now again when's the last time right. you were I, on anyway no, well, that's, well i think that's like, it it's like access you know they would love to have the opportunity i'm sure to interview anyone in the squad or anyone in congress so mm -hmm. so, so i think really that's what it is it's just more or less they put this out just their way of saying sorry we don't want to give up our access here you know so well luckily she gives opportunities for people like this to speak you know right like so again shout out to lucy for this so this is going to be the last clip but i think also lucy kind of not only do you need to charge your phone which we found out in the last clip but like horizontal video like like or have two phones one vertical and one but prioritize the horizontal you know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, okay. Um, either that so, or it's an artistic choice. Um, yeah. But anyway. So this is Mohammed Latifu. Um, hmm. So he spoke out outside the high school in reference to his brother um, who went into the armed services. And so again, this kind of, he kind of goes into what I just said before in terms of... Um, you know, the danger of having, you know, like going into the armed services and not necessarily being taken care of. Mm. And so I'll have him explain what happened to his brother. My name is Mohamed Latif, one of the brothers of Abdul Muxiki Latifu. It's a sad story. A young man who was just beginning to embark on his future to be taken away from us at a young age. He re recently just joined the military back in 2021. But unfortunately, one of his roommates decided to just end his life. Yes. Yes, at Fort Rucker, Alabama. We got the call January 10th of 2023. His life was short-lived in the military. He didn't even serve for five or six months. And it was still sensitive topic. He had just turned 21 years old. January 3rd. Sorry. My brother was just a quiet person. He never fought. He never had no arguments with nobody. He never spoke back even to my parents, nor I know of his siblings. It was big on anime. This recent one was two piece. Or one piece, I believe. You know, that's what it is. That's what they call it these days. I'm not big on that. But he was very, very smart. Very quiet gentleman. So to get that story or the phone call from one of the colonels stating that um, my brother was brutally murdered in his own dorm room, it saddens me. Two months has has gone by. We're yet to get any answers from the military. Mm. Nobody calls the house, and they don't tell us anything. They have called us so far, quote unquote, for updates. The very first update was February tenth, stating that they gathered the evidence to take him to the lab. Understand me? Sorry. Even an amateur understands that if a crime occurs, we have to gather the evidence and take it to the lab. That's not what my parents want to hear. That's not what I, my sister, nor my three other brothers want to hear. We want to hear what really happened. What took place? Was there uh, an event that took place prior to him getting killed? What happened? They're yet to tell us anything. Just a couple of days ago, they called us again with another update, quote unquote. You won't believe what they tell us. They say that um, they just handed over the investigation to Fort Benning, which I believe is, is located in, in North Carolina, uh, Georgia, right? Yeah. Mm. That's not an that's not no update. We, we really want to hear what happened, what took place, what transpired. Did they have any beef between them? Pass the buck. From, from basic training to AIT till today. 
no answers, no no phone calls stating that, oh, yes, we're just trying to give you something tangible to keep your mind at peace. My father can't sleep. My mom can't sleep. I can't sleep. And yet my brother, it's not, it's not here with us. He's gone forever. Yeah, they said, and I quote, they have arrested somebody. We still don't have no updates as to what this person is. We constantly have to find out information on our own, on the news outlet down south. This is absurd. And it's sickening. So anybody who is thinking about enlisting their kid to the military, I think you better think again. Don't do it. I wouldn't. Right. Study abroad for free. Exactly. Don't do it because I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't even dare ask my kids, friends, anybody to join the military, any sector. I don't care what it is, what they're doing to quote unquote serve the uh, protect the country because they're not. They're killing your own. They're molesting these women that go over there, these kids, young men and women that go over there, sexually harass them, and then kill them. Then try to cover it up. You know? And then they'll tell you, sorry for what happened, our condolences. No, keep your condolences. Mm -hmm. We want answers. That's what we want, really. Justice. You know? Justice for everybody who had to endure this and for the families. Who had right. to endure this? You understand me? You don't know what they're going through at night. A sudden death? It's not what a parent wants to hear. Mm. You know, this that's supposed to be one of the one of one of the safest environment, quote unquote. But no. They go over there and encounter all sorts of things. Yep. You know, with that being said, I really would like to thank you guys. Thank you for giving thank me the time. Yeah. So, what do, what do you have to say to him, AOC? Like, well, I, and again, it's the idea of like, if you know you knew who your constituents were, mm -hmm. you would do better. Absolutely, you would know how they feel regarding the military, especially given the free examples that we just read tonight and instead of pulling off this stunt in in the guise of oh i'm trying to help young people get an education in an alternate route there are plenty of opportunities that they even shared you know on the street in terms of how to get these young people education for free you know honestly that's what she should have been talking about so from, as I said, the idea of her having, well, U.S. Department of Education, while it's okay, you should have had people who are offering grant money, scholarship yeah. money there. Mm -hmm. You should have had talks about how they can finance their education so that they can go either for free or not much money. You should have had more opportunities. Again, this is an art school, you know? These are kids that are looking to get into theater or, like, where are those programs, AOC? You know, I'm sure a lot of these kids have don't, especially being in that they're in New York, you know, I'm sure there's going to be enough opportunities if they had the right connections to figure out where they can go in terms of like if they wanted to go in some kind of arts program or some kind of arts internship that they can do outside of high school. Those yeah. are the opportunities that you should have provided for them, AOC, not the military. Yep. He has more. Um, you want to continue or you want people to go to Lucy's channel and go watch yeah, the rest so of it? So I, yeah, I'm done. I mean, like I said, there's enough people who have talked about this. I really re guys recommend that you watch Savvy's stream. And as I said, she had up her clip on this today. So please watch that. And she was also on Rising this morning talking about this. So please support Sabi in watching that. And then also uh, shout out to Lucy for taking all this footage to kind of counter what AOC was saying. Um, so you can follow her, you know, at her YouTube channel. 
uh, to watch other clips that we didn't necessarily didn't play. Um, yeah, as I well put it in the Hydra chat. Hydra. Um, so thank you for that HP. particular video. If people want to go watch the full thing, pretty right. good. It's seven minutes. It's pretty quick. So go yeah. check that out after this.